During World War II, American women made enormous contributions to the war effort. Yet, much of their fighting wasn't on the battlefront, but on the home front. Their home front activities offered challenges and opportunities never available before to women. Even everyday tasks took on greater meaning and depth. The contributions of millions of American women on the home front were vital. They helped win World War II. Women ran their homes and cared for their families amid challenging wartime rationing of materials and food that affected most aspects of their daily lives. But they did much more. Women worked in factories to produce military equipment, helped care for wounded soldiers, and provided emotional support for troops. They grew victory gardens in the city and cultivated crops on America's farms, feeding those at home and on the battlefront. Women even flew airplanes. The garments displayed on these mannequins represent just some of the stories of millions of American women during World War II. When America entered the war, male military pilots were in short supply, so women stepped in to fill the void. More than a thousand women learned to fly, then joined the Women Air Force Service pilots, known as WASPs. These women ferried planes from factories to military bases, tested newly repaired planes, transported equipment and personnel, and towed gunnery targets, releasing men for combat duty overseas. This suit belonged to Ellen Roddus, a college student who decided to learn to fly, perhaps inspired by the contributions of the WASPs. So, why the stylish suit? Ellen Roddus wore it when she married her flight instructor in March 1945. The labor force shrank as men left to join the military. Just as American industry was gearing up to produce planes, jeeps, tanks, bombs, and guns, America called on women to take up the slack. Millions did, heeding the call to do the job he left behind. Rosie the Riveter, a fictional character who embodied the ideal woman defense industry worker, came to represent these women. These sturdy garments, uh, manufactured under the U.S. War Production Board, were made for women working on farms or in the factories. More than 3.5 million women volunteered for the Red Cross. It was a popular way to do your part for the war effort. These women assisted medical personnel in stateside military hospitals, and helped boost patient morale. They made surgical dressings, collected blood donations, and provided first aid training in communities nationwide. Volunteers also shipped care packages to prisoners of war in Europe and the Far East and to soldiers at home and abroad. Red Cross volunteers worked in many capacities, including motor corps, nurses' aides, and home service. Each corps had a distinctive uniform. Hospital and recreation volunteers wore gray uniforms with a white cap and a gray veil. The United Service Organizations, known as the USO, provided welcome recreation for troops. The USO operated approximately 3,000 clubs in the United States, where women volunteered as hostesses, dancing with servicemen, playing cards or ping pong, or serving donuts and coffee. 
Some servicemen just wanted to talk or share photographs of loved ones, so the women often lent an understanding ear to soldiers who were homesick or lonely. In 1945, Detroit's AFL-USO committee organized a series of weekend social activities for convalescing servicemen from Percy Jones Hospital, a military hospital in Battle Creek, Michigan. One of the hostesses who provided companionship for these soldiers during dinner, dancing, or visits to local points of interest was Wilma Carrico, who wore this dress. Four years of war would change traditional notions of what a woman could accomplish. Since then, women have continued to challenge that thinking, participating in society in ways once unimaginable. <laughs>